Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to have a match between Felthas and Golda on Valus Mananeris, which, if you have not, if you didn't see the Nada tournament that I did a while ago, you will not know what this map is. Which is fine, because, well, I don't know how many people actually watched that, but hey, a few people did. If you did, you'll know what this map is. If you didn't, you probably won't. Yeah, it is a larger map. Very large map we have. We'll see gold is in the northeast. Failed us in the north... Oh, sorry, northwest and northeast, respectively. Quite a lot of metal across the map, as you can see. Really is designed for games, larger games and team games and such. It should be interesting to see how it plays out for a one-on-one. -on -one. I imagine it'll be a very large game. Anyway, we'll just get started now. So, Failed Thoughts starting on the northeast side of the map with Clogobot Factory, which... I can see sort of why this is a very hilly... This is a fairly hilly map. Kind of tell due to the size, but this is fairly hilly. Though in 0k, it doesn't feel that hilly. The units are taller than they are in Nauta, so it's... A bit less pronounced, but it's still pretty hilly. Like this... These cliffs are still pretty meaningful. Golda, on the other hand, is going for spiders, which makes a bit more sense in this map, though honestly, I'm surprised none of them are going for light vehicles. I'm pretty sure light vehicles would path no problem across most of the map, and this is a giant map, but Golda is sending out fleas across the entire map just to see what's going on, see where Felthos is. Felthos, on the other hand, just sending one glaive out to scout to the northwest, down to the southeast, and is going to see everything being built up there. You will, however, find that Golda is going for spot. No, he won't! Or, no, he does. Never mind. He just spots it. Decides not to go for it. Ops instead to continue to go for his Glaive Scout, getting it. Actually, getting a couple Conjurers and then more Glaives. Confident that the size of the map means that Golda is not about to attack, which is exactly true. Admittedly, the Fleas are going to come in and do a bit of harassment, but they won't be able to do too much before dying. One of them just barely trying to get in, but Failthos nicely placed his Lotus. Stopping any real fleet from getting it. Although, admittedly, the fleet did have a bit of an opportunity. There was this area right here, I think, is a dead spot for vision. Yeah, it's a little hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure that this lotus. Yeah, it's. There is a dead spot behind the solar plant. But hard to spot. So, Golda couldn't easily go for that. And this one, he can't go for it. There's too many glaives now. It was a very short window, and that window has since closed. And Golda setting up more and more fleas from the south. He is not... Okay, he's building up a Venom. No. Building up a Venom. Another 10 Fleas and the Weaver. Getting to try to get him with the Fleas as best he can. He's at least doing a bit of damage. Mostly just scouting. Not even harassment, just scouting. Golda is just getting an idea of what Failthos is up to, which is a very good thing to do. You always want to be scouting. You always want to know what your opponent is up to. If you can, and with Spider Bots, you most definitely can. One of their biggest strengths is the Flea. Just go across the map, it's 20 metal each, no big deal if you lose them, and you can get a lot of information that's worth well over 20 metal with a single flea. At this point, though, it looks like Feldos is going to not have to worry about that. He has Glaives set up around his entire base. That does mean, however, his expansion is going to be a little bit slowed, I would imagine. Not by much, but still, he has to be a bit careful. The fleas can come in and deal with the Conjurers, if there's any openings, and he knows Golda is going to be looking for that. Gotta be careful, gotta build more Lotuses than he probably would like to. Now, Fleas supported by Venom. That's where it gets dangerous. Even though Venom on its own is fairly dangerous, but yeah. Venom supported Flea. That... That can be problematic. The only hard part is for the Spider player, because of course the Venom has a really large splash radius. Which means... Oh, it doesn't say what the splash radius is. But yeah, Venom has a fairly large splash radius, and that tends to stun the Fleas that are supporting it. Ironically, but unfortunately for them... You'd think it'd be useful, but yeah, it's a little bit mitigated by that fact. However, that being said, there's no real defense that Golda has set up. Golda a bit confident they stopped Felthos from attacking too much. Felthos will be able to tear apart the entire west side of the map. He has no obstruction to this. The only thing he has are fleas, and they aren't in position. There are some venoms coming in here, but I doubt Felthos is going to move these glaives back. He's just going to keep going forward with them. Get rid of this weaver. Get rid of these metal extractors. And his own base, it should be fine. He's not going to worry about it too much. A little surprised he hasn't started building Rocco's, but he's confident in his Glaive Micro. No Venoms have come up. He's not focusing on the Glaives. That's the one problem. If he focused on the Glaives, he could tear apart everything in this area. But he is more focused, it would seem, on his own base, on the Venom, not on the Glaives. And Golda, on the other hand, focused on his own base as well. She focused a bit more across the map. But this Venom is going to be a bit problematic. However, the Glaives should be able to tear it apart. It's just tricky, though. It's the Splash... 
the glaives get too close to each other, it becomes impossible for them to deal with the venom. And that's where Rocco's come in. And I don't know if Feltos is going for that. He apparently is not. These glaives. These glaives are not going for the remaining metal extractors, and the venom is in position. This nut is not going to work out especially well, I'm afraid. Feltos now finally taking advantage of the glaive positioning. But the venom in place to stop them and go to will lose another metal extractor, but that'll be it. He is, however, losing a lot of his scouting fleas as Felthos pushes out once again, but Felthos walking away from the Venom really should do that. The Venom does have the advantage. There's this big plateau in the center, and the Venom can take much more advantage of that than the Glaze can. I think the Glaze can run up. Yeah, they can, but slowly. The Venom, on the other hand, gets very little speed reduction from that. Ultimately, the Venom would have the advantage. That being said, it is kind of sad because Felthos had a minute or two where he could have just gone in with the Glaze and had... No opposition whatsoever. Torn about Golda's entire economy. Probably gone into the main base directly, actually. There's only a defender. There's only two defenders. Yeah, those glaives could have won the game. <laughs> I'm not kidding. There was only one defender and defender here. Three glaives would have been able to go through there. Would have lost two of them ultimately. Maybe not won the game entirely. Would have gotten close. With defender... F oh, sorry, with more glaives following up. That probably would have finished it. But no, unfortunately, these three glaives are going to die in the most embarrassing fashion possible. Getting stunned, locked to death by a Venom. Their comrades in arms coming in, but far too late to save them. These three Glaives, unfortunately, will not win the game here for Failthos. It was close, but not to be. And going down right as their Glaive buddies come in to try to save them. But far too late. They could not save the day. They were too darn lazy. Could not get out their butts fast enough to actually save the day. However, they are able to ma do what the first set of glaives could not. Unfortunately, the Banshees are going to get in the way. Banshees coming from the gunship switch. I should have pointed that out a bit more obviously. That gunship switch was going on. I did point that out on the camera, but I didn't actually mention it. Yeah, those glaives. Man. Failthos had such a juicy chance. Just tear apart Golda's economy. Still is taking advantage of the chances he is getting now. He's realized that he had a chance. And now doing what he can with it. However, I should point out that he is operating pretty blind, so admittedly, checking all the melee stretches is a good matter, of course, especially when you see they've gone that far in, but still, he is blind. I'll give him that. But yeah, that is kind of a game sense thing. And the Glaive's trying to deal with the Banshees. One of the Banshees is going to go down. The other Banshees will be able to get away, though. Actually, the Glaive's retreating instead. Though it looks like, no, the Banshees are going for another round. I don't think it's going to work out. Five Banshees should be okay, but at the same time... Are we getting Rockos? We are not getting Rockos. So Felthos, if he had gone for Rockos as I had recommended, he would have actually been at a disadvantage right now, thanks to the Banshee Switch. Which is kind of weird to say, but probably a pretty good idea for Spiders to do. <laughs> if your opponent is going heavy Rocco, go for a Banshee Switch. It becomes harder for them to actually deal with it. Because Banshees just tear apart Rockos, no problem. Felthos has gone for the Air Switch, going for some Swifts of his own to deal with the Banshees. Not nearly enough Swifts to actually deal with them effectively, but it's getting close. Two or three more, and that will actually work out. The Banshees have a bit of a hard time dealing with the Swifts, and the Swifts are pretty dedicated anti-air. They can't hit ground, but they're mostly anti-air. Flex AA, but still AA primarily. Sides, however, coming in for Failthos. He's got a couple of those in so far. Going to the southwest. I guess he expects Golda has expanded it faster than he actually has. Surprised he hasn't gone into the main base to try to tear that apart. And admittedly, Failthos, has he even seen the main base? I don't think so. No, Felthos has no knowledge of what's in the main base, or at least he hasn't. He has not seen it. We don't see any memory of that. Gold, on the other hand, knows exactly what's going on in Felthos' base. He, in fact, has a flea right here. Just waiting. Just spotting all these solar collectors. He knows about the Cloakabot factory. He doesn't know about the airplane plant, where it is, but he knows that it exists. He can kind of see where the planes are coming from. So he has some knowledge of where Felthos has set up. Veltos, on the other hand, wow, he's got a lot of stacked... Okay, this is the big thing that Golda is doing right now. He has forced Felthos to build a great deal of stag defenses compared to what Golda has. Golda has been getting, surprisingly, not as ahead as he, you'd expect he would, thanks to that expenditure. Possibly due to the fact that Felthos has successfully counter-raided. But still, Felthos is spending a lot on his defenses, which Golda has kind of forced him to do, thanks to those fleas. However, even with that, as we can see, Golda not getting a massive economic advantage as a result. Felthos... Ultimately, didn't lose out all that much as a result of building the stag defenses. And he is going for Rocco Glaive, which, thanks to the air support, means the Banshees aren't going to be a problem. And the Rockos, of course, can be great against Venoms. And Sides have revealed themselves over in the southwest side of the map. 
Able to get rid of Weaver. Able to get rid of a Melee Stretcher. We'll get rid of this Defender, no problem. There it goes. Down it goes. Going to the Southwest to tear apart these Metal Extractors and... Banshee's coming in to try to stop them. Should be successful. No for the follow- actually, okay, follow-up being prepared over in the north side of the map. As Golda moves his Banshee's out of position from the north side of the map. Felthos is he gonna go for a, an attack thanks to that distraction. Doesn't look like it right away. However, the sides are wisely staying cloaked and in a rather awkward position, although not the hardest to reach position. Not the most obvious position, but also not the hardest one to check. The Banshees are about to... They are in position to spot them, though. And right as the Banshees run away, no follow-up attack, just apparently waiting on this. The size attack a bit too soon. The Banshees had not yet gone out of position. The size, one of them does go down. It doesn't even get rid of the second Metal Extractor. It just goes down. Swift's too little too late. However, more size can come in. Failthoss still has a minor economic advantage. It is still a bit ahead, mostly thanks to the central Metal Extractors. Otherwise, the players are fairly even. Yeah, the central metal extractors have made quite a bit of difference, but even then, Trident's in place on top of the Banshees. Trident's being the anti-air gunship, helping tear apart all of those Swifts. All of them. Or all but one at this point. More have been built. Hawks coming in to try to deal with what is with those Tridents trying to stop them from actually getting rid of the air units. But at this point, some dedicated anti-air may not be a bad idea for Failthus. However, he is now going for the northern attack. Golda has set up a pretty good defensive line over to the north side. That's going to stop these Rockos. Well, it's going to slow them down, but not going to stop them. The Rockos able to tank out the attacks. Able to survive long enough. Get rid of the defenders. More defender missiles will be coming in over to take care of further Rockos. And not quite fully successful. More Rockos following up, and the Rockos over cannot hit the Banshees. This is what I meant. The Banshees are a great counter to the Rockos. They can barely be hit by them. That being said... Hawks are a great counter to the Banshees. Hawks and Swifts together definitely will do wonders against them, but the Rockos, even as some of them are getting destroyed by the Banshees, the rest of them are able to take out this Venom and ultimately just take out this entire defensive line. In fact, Golda's commander is pretty at risk. And the south side of the map, we have Veldas coming in with three Glaives. At the same time, he goes to the center with the Hawks. At the same time, as he's attacking in the north with the Rockos, though the Rocko attack in the north is not doing especially well. Nice use of Hawks over to get rid of the Banshees. The Banshees are pretty are going down pretty effectively, and the Glaives coming in as a nice follow-up. Taking care of Golda's command. Golda's commander is pretty much dead. We're very close to it. He's taking a lot of damage at half health. Glaives coming in. The Banshees are operating as a nice distraction, but even then, Golda's commander, 20% health. This Glaive will not kill it, but if follow-up Rockos, Rockos come in, that would do the trick. However, they are not. Golda's commander gets away. Loses quite a few Banshees in the process, but remember, this is all happening in Golda's territory. And Golda's territory is pretty sacrosanct at this point. Did not lose any ground there. He lost a few melee strategies in the southwest to really no opposition whatsoever. Glaives just walked in, killed everything, killed more melee extractors, and a Banshee gonna try to stop this, but the Glaives should be able to finish it off. One of them might die, but yeah, the Glaives will have no problem taking care of that Banshee. Second Banshee, however, that is a problem, and a third Banshee, well, that'll just turn it around. Banshee... Now, let's see. Banshee for Glaive trade. Banshees are worth 220 metal. Glaives are worth 65. I'd say that was worth it, but just barely. About even. A little bit ahead for Golda, but overall about even. Still, the anti-air Aryans are in place for Felthos. And Golda continuing to move in with more and more Tridents and Banshees. He is pretty much abandoned the ground, other than a few fleas for scouting. The Glaives, of course, are going to tear apart the fleas without issue, and... The north side has been destroyed. Golda's commander has rebuilt, though. Actually, auto repair system is very helpful for that purpose. Same time, Felthos's commander, particle beam and nanolay. The 17 build power. He is an in-base commander, no doubt about it. Pushing heavily into the Klogobot factory. And there's another scythe. Exactly what Felthos needed. Two scythes. Once again, going to go for this. I still think he needs to go to the main base. In fact, with the caretakers, and he has to go for the main base. If he gets those caretakers out, that's going to be a huge blow to Golda. That is the biggest thing that Failthos can do right now, is take out those caretakers. That is totally feasible, and definitely the biggest blow he can deal. Just give him what Golda has. Golda's economy is way too spread out for that to be a big hit. Just with a sneak attack like that. But in the main base, that is definitely a sneak attack. There's no real defenses. There's a lot of buildings, however, so the decloak is inevitable. But at this point... It's getting harder and harder. The bandits are in position. In fact, I think it's too late at this point. And Felthos, not even aware of this. I'm a little surprised he hasn't gone for scythe attacks in the main base. 
And nice line of fleas. That's what they're for. Perfect line of fleas spots out the scythe, stopping it from attacking in the southwest, and alerting Golda that scythes are incoming. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like I can see why players don't, in general, attack the main base. That's wise. You don't want to attack the main base too soon. It's likely to be heavily defended. But with size, I mean, they cloak in. They're they're hard to spot, or at least they would be if weren't for all these fleas stopping them from cloaking. And now one of them is going to be fully decloaked when the bandits hit, and it is going to go down. I don't think it's going to be able to escape. It, no, it's not. The other scythe will be able to escape, and actually that will with... What's this damage? 200 damage a shot. Oh, that caretaker would have gone down easily to one scythe, but not to two. Veldos trying to out-micro Golda, and he's going to fail at doing so. Unfortunately, Golda spotting out that scythe. Going to take it out. It might be able to take out a melee extractor. It will be able to... No, not even... Okay, just barely takes out a melee extractor, but far less damage than could have been dealt. It really was a matter of timing. When those scythes came in originally, if they had gone straight for Golda's base, they would have had a great opportunity to take care of the caretakers, but unfortunately that opportunity has passed for the scythes. Not for other stuff, though. For... I mean, actually for... Well, if he goes for Ravens or Phoenixes, that would work fairly well. However, focusing on Hawks instead to take care of the air game, take out Feldhaus' Banshees, which admittedly is more of protecting the ground than it is taking the air game. I mean, Feldhaus doesn't have to worry about getting attacked from the air in his own... He doesn't have to worry about his own planes. He has to worry about his ground forces. Unfortunately, losing a lot of his own planes as well as the Tridents, which are doing a wonderful job of taking care of the Hawks. Well, Glaive's coming in... Not able to deal with the bandits effectively. Rocco's as well not going to be able to deal with the bandits. In terms of sheer numbers, they should be fine. But it's going to be difficult for them to actually hit the bandits. That's always the problem. Still, Gremlin's coming in as well just to try to deal with his banshees once and for all. However, that's not likely to happen. The gunship plant is the biggest investment for Golda. And the shieldbot factory just behind that with the bandits. You know, bandits and banshees. Hey... Theme of bans today, although admittedly neither of these players have been banned as far as I know. But yeah, Felthos is still pushing forward with the Rockos. The sheer number of them is intimidating, I'm sure, but the Banshees will just stop that. And the Fleas and Bandits getting in position, finally able to get some shots in on those Rockos. However, Hawks coming in as the Banshees are distracted, tearing the Banshees apart, and ultimately not much can be done about that. The Tridents were well out of position. The Tridents just halfway across the map. The Gremlins... One of them got trying to down to half health. The rest of them not doing too much, but still, those Banshees... I don't, how many of them are even left? I think there's only this one. So now zero, or now one again. No, never mind, there are six, one of them in production. A lot of the base getting repaired. That's what it is. But the Hawks are now winning the air war, getting rid of yet another Trident and more Banshees. The Banshees really have no chance, but the Trident's gone, or very nearly so. Golda has a lot of map taken, but not a whole lot of map control. This entire south side of the map could easily be overrun by Feldhaus' forces. Feldhaus right now has a two times army advantage on Golda. Wow. I think Feldhaus might actually win. That's surprising. I mean, if he does, well done to Feldhaus. If not, though, still, that's this has been a very good match. He's really shown he's quite effective. Though, admittedly, I would like to see him in a tournament. I want to see him in the next 1v1 tournament, which, unfortunately, will not be until July, if... Assuming there is going to be one, then. Not sure when the... There should be a June 2v2 tournament as well. I'm not sure when it's going to be, but yeah, July. That's the next 1v1 tournament, likely. And Golda's Commander now going down. I want to see Feldas in that tournament, because I have been casting him fairly recently, and he is pretty interesting to watch. He does do a lot of stuff with unit combinations. We can see also a lot of stuff with switching in to things like size. And I thinking, surprisingly, well, not surprisingly in this game, no ticks, but a bit surprisingly in general in this game earlier on before the Banshees. Still, he is good at unit combinations. That's... I think I've noticed Felthos does quite well. Gold, on the other hand, is just generally good at knowing what to do. At this point, I think this map, either un unfamiliar in how to deal with it in 0k, or just a little bit of overconfidence in what he could do with all these expansions. I mean, Felthos, yeah, he built a lot of defenses, but at this point, being that he was able to raid Golda out, and Golda had to rebuild a lot of that, I think, ultimately, Felthos is winning. Felthos is winning in terms of unit counters. He's... He's winning in terms of fact that his area is pretty well defended. He's consolidated his territory fairly well, and he has a decent amount of map control. So yeah, Felthos is solidly ahead. Just needs to push forward, needs to deal with the rest of these forces. Stop Golda's forces from coming in. If he was able to get a strike in with a size on these caretakers, that would seal the deal. 
I don't know if he's going to go for that. It looks like, no, he is continuing to go for the southwest. He wants to take out metal extractors. He does not want to go for those caretakers. He does see them now, though. He will see those caretakers. He knows they exist. Thalthos is well aware that those caretakers are there. He knows they're a juicy target. Whether he goes them directly to the size looks like is not to be the case. And that is not to be. He's going to go for the southwest instead. And there's not much Gota can do about it, actually. He has some bandits coming in to try to deal with what he can. He's going to get distracted by the Rockos, but these size will be able to tear apart most of the economy here before the bandits get in. I think this is the only metal extractor that will survive if any of them do. And if Feldhaus decides to go north instead, well, that's just going to be even tougher. The bandits are going to be on the south side, and Feldhaus attacking the north as well. If there's anything Feldhaus needs to work on, it'd be multitasking, because he seems to set up a lot of these attacks and with size and the glaives, and earlier on we saw the attack to the north as well as the attack to the southwest that could have happened at the same time and really distracted Golda as Golda pull, pulls units out of position. That was like five minutes into the game. If he had done that, that would have been very powerful. I think Feldhaus needs to work on that. That would be... The, that's That would be awesome to see, though. If you could pull that off with the multiple attacks that he had set up, actually having them pay off would be awesome. Still, Trident coming in, just barely managing to win that part of the air war. A little unfortunate for for Failthos there, but still able to go north and able to take care of more and more Metal Age Riders. If he goes back and fights the bandits, he should be... Well, one bandit at a time he'll be fine, but there's a lot of bandits right now. The scientists have cloaked... Oh, shoot, the scientists have cloaked. The bandit's going down. That banshee's sure not. And these scientists continue to move forward. No, not moving forward. Cloaking up. One of them cloaks up and ends up dying. Its death throws end up decloaking the other scythe, which also goes down. Well, at the same time, Failthos... Focusing on the north side of the map and pushing in a full assault on the south side of the map just to finish it off and in the center as well for good measure. Felothos is attacking across the map. Banshees are coming in. They are just taking a lot of damage from the gremlins. Yeah, they are going down pretty quickly to the gremlins. And the Rockos and Warriors taking care of everything else. This is pretty much... Well, Scorpion coming in as well just, just for good measure. But yeah, this is it. Golda throws in the towel. Felothos wins. Nicely done, Felothos. That was impressive. Yeah, wow. Although, I mean, like, Golda did go Spiders, so you could say it's a handicap factory, but... Golda plays Spiders quite well. I really don't know if there is a... factor that Golda plays poorly, so I cannot say that. It's not really a handicap thing for him. We're talking about Golda here. Golda plays everything, and plays everything frighteningly well. And that was pretty... That was... Well, I just failed us, managed to get better position on him. He did... Admittedly, that trick out with the fleas, forcing the defenses, was a good thing, but Gota didn't manage to follow up and failed us, managed to counter it by out-harassing, really. Very neat game to watch. Thank you all for watching that, and that is going to be it for me tonight. So, I will be... I will be finishing. I will be casting again Saturday as usual. My schedule, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. It's on the Twitch page. It's on... Okay, it's not on the actual... I should be on the videos themselves. Not sure. Yes, it is. The schedule is on the video right now. It is up right now. You can see it. Yes, that is my schedule. Yeah. Thank you all for watching once again, and have a good night.